All right. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to record this video to help you guys kind of follow along with your um, lab yeast cellular respiration or fermentation lab. Okay. So the first thing what you need to do is um, you are going to get your virtual lab test cellular respiration now. Okay, it's right here. So of course, this is in a Google Doc, so make sure you make a copy. So the first thing I need you guys to do right now is, again, write your name. You're not going to have partners, so no partner needed. Date, period. Okay. And give it a title. Come up with a title. You can copy the same title that I have, or you come up with a new title. The first thing I want you guys to do is fill in that research section in one paragraph explain cell respiration using these terms glycolysis Krebs cycle electron transport system fermentation and mitochondria if you need help you can always go back to your note on cell respiration all right so i'm going to give you guys uh you can pause the video now to complete that research section all right so pause the video all right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, after you do that research section, I need you guys to move on to the purpose. Every experiment, every investiga investigation you do, there's always has to be a problem or a purpose. So the problem or purpose in this um, experiment is how do different temperature and sugar type affect the rate of carbon dioxide production during fermentation? If you guys remember from photosynthesis, right? Um, Gizmo Lab, we base on oxygen production to measure the rate of a of the photosynthesis process. In this experiment, we're gonna base on carbon dioxide production. Um, in this case, doing fermentation to measure the rate uh, of cell respiration in yeast. Okay. So to answer that question you need to write your hypothesis. And again, the question is, how do different temperature and sugar type affect the rate of carbon dioxide production? So let me know, right? If you change the temperature, you increase the temperature, and if you change the sugar type, would it increase the carbon dioxide or would it, would it decrease the carbon dioxide? Because, give me a reason. All right, so don't forget to follow your hypothesis statement. All right, so write your prediction right now. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to write your prediction. The next thing before we fill out the material, before we fill out the procedure, I'm gonna show you a video made by uh, one of my, one of the uh, colleague teacher. No, it's not Mr. Bao, um, one of the colleague teacher. I want you guys to watch the video of how he set up the experiment. As you watch the video, you may pause the video anytime you want and fill in the material. And you are going to summarize the procedure in six, in five steps. Okay. So keep in mind, each procedure, you are going to write a sentence or more than a sentence. All right. And you're also going to find a picture that depict or represent that step. And you're going to copy and insert it here. Um, total five steps, but please choose a five step, step that summarize the entire experiment. So why don't we watch the experiment first and you're welcome to rewatch the experiment as many times you like. So that way it can help you write the material and the procedure. So I'm going to switch to the video right now and enjoy watching the experiment. We're going to look at the fermentation of simple sugars uh, by yeast. That's why I creatively call it the yeast fermentation lab. It's a very simple lab. All we need is some water, some food for the yeast. I've got flour and sugar and some yeast, which you can buy in the grocery store. Uh, I have several different flasks, five different flasks, and I'm going to create different conditions for the yeast to grow in. Every flask is going to get water, though, just to provide an environment for the yeast to live in. Uh, they're all going to get 100 grams of water. It's from the same source. It's the same type of water, the same temperature, all that. Um, some of the flasks, four out of five of them, are going to get yeast. Now, yeast is a um, 
unicellular fungus, kind of like a mushroom, but just one cell. It's a heterotroph. It needs to eat other things. In this case, I'm going to feed it sugars. And it performs anaerobic cellular respiration, uh, otherwise known as fermentation, instead of aerobic cellular respiration. It comes coated in kind of a freeze-dried food coating so that um, it stays fresh. You can just keep it on your shelf until you need it, and then when you dissolve it in water, the yeast will become active. They'll, they'll, their coating will dissolve, and they'll emerge and uh, start doing their thing. Uh, I'm also going to add some food for the yeast to some of these flasks, not all. Uh, my two foods are sugar, and just to have something to compare it to, uh, I'm going to compare it to flour. Now remember, sugar is a carbohydrate called sucrose. It's basically one fructose and one glucose molecule stuck together. Its chemical formula is C12H22O11. Uh, we call it table sugar, uh, but it's just one of many carbohydrates. Uh, you know it's a carbohydrate because it ends in ose, and also because it has that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. All right, going to try and be precise with my measurements here. Okay, got my sugar, and I'm going to add it to a few of these. So I'm going to add it to this one here, yeast, sh sugar, water, and I'm going to boil this one. I'm also going to weigh some out, and I'm going to add it to flask two. That's just yeast, sugar, and water. And finally, I have this flask that I'm going to get rid of the yeast. I'm, I'm just going to have sugar and water in it together. Uh, this flask all, all the way on the right, flask number five, that's going to be my yeast, flour, and water. So instead of sugar, we're going to try flour. Flour is a more complex carbohydrate, takes a little bit longer to break down, is made of more than just um, fructose and glucose. There's more, more to it. Okay, I'm going to take this one that needs to be boiled. I'm going to stick it on my hot plate here. And we're going to fast forward a little bit while it heats up. Okay, it's few minutes later and it's it's come to a boil you can see it bubble I, I must I gotta stir it the whole time or else it'll start to cook um, but you can see it's it's nice and boiled there uh, so I'm gonna take it let's add it back to the others Ta -da. okay good and we are ready to begin this experiment everything's been added lastly though we need some way of measuring uh, how much gas is gonna come out of these flasks, right? We need some way of measuring the fermentation. So we could measure how much the sugar gets eaten, but I don't have any special ways of doing that. Um, an easier way is just to measure how much carbon dioxide is created. Uh, so there are many ways you can do that. We're going to use just balloons. We're not really caring too much about really precise data on this one. I just want kind of a demonstration that you can see easily. So I'm going to capture it in these balloons. And you can see the balloons, they're all the same type, same brand, even the same color, trying to control for as much as possible here. Um, if you're interested in doing this more quantitatively in a way that you can really count well, you could um, put maybe a carbon dioxide meter on top if you're lucky enough to have one of those, if your school has one of those. Uh, you could also just put on a gas pressure sensor. The higher the pressure inside the container, the more gas must be created inside the container. Uh, so therefore, you can surmise the higher the pressure, the more active the yeast are. Uh, there are many ways you can do this. We're just going to use balloons, though. I like balloons because they're easy and visual. Oh, this one just broke, so I'm going to put a fresh one on. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to leave them for 24 hours, and we're going to see what happens. Once again, flask number five is yeast, flour, and water. Four is just sugar and water, but no yeast. Three is the yeast, the sugar, the water, and it's been boiled and two is yeast, sugar, and water, and one is just yeast and water. So those are my five different treatments here. We're going to check in on them in 24 hours. All right. Uh, hopefully you got a chance to watch the experiment. So again, one more time. Summarize that experiment, that investigation in five steps. Write it in sentences, and then choose a picture for each step that represent the experiment. You can search online and then you can put a picture there or you can put multiple picture in one in each box to summarize the five step right step one should be setting up the experiment step five should be like collecting data or cleaning up the experiment and so on okay and then i need you guys to figure out the variable okay so from what you've seen in that experiment 
okay? I need you to write down the experimental group. This is the group that the, the test tube in the experiment that he is testing out. Which condition is it in? Which test tube? Is that the test tube one? The one that he has yeast? The one that he add water? Is it test tube two? The one that he add yeast, water, and sucrose, or in this case, sugar? Or oh, test tube three, the one where he add yeast, water, sucrose, and he boil it up? Was it test tube four or five? Is the experiment group. By the way, you can have more than one experiment group, right? Okay. Which one is the control group? Okay. Which one is the group that seem normally, this is how the yeast work normally. Which one is the independent variable, by the way? And again, aka change. And what is he, what change does he make in this experiment? And dependent variable is how does he collect his data? All right, it's been 24 hours. Let's take a look at our solutions. You can see all five lined up here. Um, let's start with the yeast in the water. The balloon looks kind of like it did when we left it. I don't see any bubbles. Looks like no fermentation happened. The yeast, the water, and the sugar, we can see is nice and foamy in the flask. And the balloon is full of gas, presumably CO2. The one that's been boiled has the same stuff in it, but it's been boiled. And that one failed to produce any CO2, failed to ferment. Uh, the one that doesn't have any yeast in it also failed to ferment. We see the balloons totally limp there. That shouldn't surprise us. And the flask on the right, the yeast and the flour and the water, that one did ferment. We can see it's kind of bubbly and it's got a, a nice full balloon, but it's not quite as full as the other one. So here are our results. All right, and then please, uh, you can squid, roll back, uh, rewind back to the video where the experiment took place. Take a screenshot of the result, All right? The change in cir circumferences, uh, cir circumference, circumferences of the balloon. Take a screenshot and put um, the picture here. And then I need you guys to base on the picture you are going to give me the respond level for test tube 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Test tube 1 again is the one with yeast, water, but no sucrose, no sugar, not boy, or no flour. I need you to tell me, does the balloon circumference is, has no respond, I mean not inflated? Is it slightly respond comparing to the rest? Is it moderate respond? Okay. Or is it extreme respond, humongous, comparing to the rest? And I want you guys to fill out the data here. Okay. Here's the explanation of these results. In our first flask, we had yeast and we had water, but we had no carbohydrates for the yeast to eat, so they weren't able to ferment, so no CO2 was produced. In the second flask, we had yeast, we had water, and we had sugar. And because of that, we had food for the yeast, and so they were able to ferment, and, and they produced lots and lots of CO2. This third flask had all that stuff but it was boiled. What that did was that killed the yeast. So the yeast were dead so they couldn't ferment all those sugars so the balloon is not filled. Fourth flask we had sugar and water but no yeast. There was nothing to do the fermentation reaction so no fermentation occurred. And finally in the fifth flask we have yeast, flour, and water. Now flour is a little bit more of a complex carbohydrate than sugar, sucrose, it's a big polymer made of many, many glucose molecules. So it's going to take those um, yeast uh, organisms a little bit longer to break that flour down into glucose to use for fermentation. So because of that, there's some CO2 produced, but not quite as much as with the sucrose. And after you fill out the data, I need you guys to answer the um, data analysis question in complete sentences, okay? And then I need you to write a conclusion. I gave you the follow, follow the sentence starter. I thought that, that means your hypothesis, right? What do you predict? And what was your result? You found out that. My data show that. Give me, talk about your data. What does those tests to show? Which one increased the most? Which one has no inflation of the balloon? Which one changed medium size of the balloon? And I know this because I observe, right? Be specific. 
I think we could have my result mean would be some of the experimental error, some of the problem that we might have experienced or the teacher might have experienced when he did this experiment. What's wrong with this experiment? There's usually mistake in the experiment because you have to do multiple times to get something correct. In the future, I would like to. So if you have to do this experiment again, what would be the change you would make? All right. And once you're done, okay, save this as PDF and turn it in.